we've made it clear that we are committed to returning this reactor to service in the first quarter of 2010. That is our very clear and unequivocal goal. We are going to keep people apprised of our progress along the way. So there will be clear milestones and reporting of progress against those milestones. So this is a project where there will be full transparency and full communication surrounding our status. And we will ensure that in the best interest of Canada and Canadians that the full regulatory review process is followed through. And when that reactor goes back into service, it's going to be operating safely and, uh, and it's going to be producing isotopes. We've developed a, a three-phase program for the, uh, the return to service. First is to do a condition assessment of the reactor and a process of identifying and selecting a repair technique. Second phase will be affecting the repair itself. And the third phase will be returning the reactor to service. So these three phases uh, interlock and are done sequentially and are going to ensure that we get this reactor back into service as soon as we possibly can. It is indeed well worth repairing. And it's very clear in our minds that the repairs are ones that should be done and that if we do them properly, which we will, that we'll return the vessel and the reactor to service and that we will affect repairs that will last for the useful life of the reactor. And of course that depends on the licensing that we apply for and currently we're looking to extend the operating license beyond October 2011 for a minimum of five years. And so with that useful life in mind, this is without question the right thing for us to be doing at this point in time. We are very committed to being as transparent as we can at each stage to base our guidance on the duration of the outage and the approach that we're taking to the outage on the best available evidence we have at each point in time. And so we have at each stage to this point said, here's what we know, here's our best estimate of what we think is going to be involved in the, in the rest of the, uh, of the project, and here's our project plan. And we have based our project plan and our disclosures surrounding that project plan on evidence. We don't want speculation. The evidence emerges as you do more and more non-destructive evaluation, as you do more analysis of the corrosion effects, as you do a more detailed critical path plan. All of those data points are ones that allow us to continually refine and update our view of what the project plan is. We truly have an outstanding team of professionals, scientists, engineers, technologists who can get this job done. But we have also drawn upon expertise from third parties around the world to help us ensure that we have all of the proper thinking done, all of the proper safeguards, double checks, checks and balances to ensure that we are handling this project in the right way and that we have the third party independent verification that's appropriate given uh, the visibility and the importance of this project. So we're investing heavily in that kind of governance and oversight and advisory framework to make sure that we've got a project plan that is practical and feasible and achievable, also one that is as aggressive as we can realistically make it in the context of safety and quality. We are very, very committed to ensuring that the reactor that we bring back into service is going to be one that operates safely and the repairs we do are of the highest quality that will allow the reactor to serve out its useful life, uh, producing isotopes for the global markets and for Canadians.